Okay, welcome to another episode of Above the Bridge. This is episode 10. Um, shout out to my producer, Boy Band John. What's up, John? Also, shout out to Defend Hawaii. So for Christmas, we're running a special. It'd be 15% off any online orders. All you do is go to defendhawaii.com and upon checkout, type in promo code ATB pod and get 15% off your whole entire order. Again, that's ATB pod on defendhawaii.com. So today, my guest, he was an intern at for us at Artist Groove Network. He was a bodybuilding competitor. He also was a personal trainer. But as of right now, he is the owner of Hawaii Detail Garage. What's up, Ikaika Rapun? Welcome to Above the Bridge. What's going on, man? What's up, man? How's everything going? Not too bad, man. So how's everything with you? So right now you own Hawaii Detail Garage. Can you explain to me a little bit about that? Do you do detailing or how, like what's the deal with this thing? Uh, so yeah, it's a Detail Garage Hawaii out in Pearl City. Um, we don't do any detailing. So I was a detailer before, but I got smart and my body told me otherwise. So now I just sell everything to, to everybody. Oh, <laughs> so, so sell you sell the products. products. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. So what makes your products better than like if I go to Long's and buy like wax or something like that? Um, so I would say that it's really user friendly. Like it's, it's professional grade, but it's not, it doesn't require a professional to apply. I guess that's okay. the most simplest way to put it. Okay, so you're um you're selling detail products for like like me and and I can get like a per a professional result on my on my car. I used some of your products before. I used the wax and the um no the clay and the ceramic coating. And uh, I yeah, gotta say, so. yeah, that the 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 clay was the most impressive. It got like every little speck of dirt that you didn't even know existed was off of my truck and my truck was so white. It was the whitest white and like, yeah, that stuff works good. So how did you get into this? Cause it's like, it's not a common thing. You're going to start a detailing product company. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I guess to kind of backtrack a little bit when you said that I was a trainer. So I was a trainer for nine years at 24 hour fitness um, okay. and on the side. I was uh, detailing kind of for side money, uh, me and my wife would go to Vegas a lot and we needed Vegas money. So I started detailing um, and it was just kind of like a side thing. And it kind of, I don't want to say got out of control, but she, my wife told me that, oh, maybe you should tell people you do this. And I was like, what? Uh, why would anybody want me to clean their car? And so I started <laughs> a, a, a Instagram and the power of social media. And it kind of fast forward to, you know, a couple of years. I did that for about three years. Where did, where were you detailing now? At? I was detailing from my house. Uh, so oh, like, so you're doing would, it at home then? Yeah. So I would train my clients at 24 Fitness. At, I was the afternoon trainer. So from like two, three o'clock to about 10 o'clock at night. But before then I would try and pump out one car a day. Mm. Yeah. Was, so you're, I know it's just a side thing. Side hustle. Everybody has one, huh? Yeah, everybody's got to have one. <laughs> so you're detailing, and then um, how did that transform into owning your own um, product company? So, like I said, it was, it got kind of crazy where I started getting random people showing up to my house, just trying to do drive-ups for appointments. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so at, at that point, I was trying to find an actual, like, commercial spot, a warehouse, so that I could make it, like, you know, 100% legitimate. Um, but I wanted to stay in Kaneohe, because I live in Kaneohe. Um, but the commercial space here is, there's no vacancy, really. And the two spots that I tried to get, they didn't give me the time of day, because at that time, I wasn't, I was taking mainly cash, right? And there was yeah. no, no track record of income. Your business. Right, right. So, so basically, they thought you were a drug dealer. <laughs> My neighbors did too, because <laughs> random people random. started showing up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's kind of hard to tell them, oh, I'm just going to wash their car. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> so, yeah, 
um, I was looking for a commercial spot. It didn't really, being that I didn't have any track record, um, nobody was giving me the time of the day. And so the parent company of the, the chemicals that I was using, chemical guys, um, the local distributor hit me up and said that they have this idea or opportunity to open a store here in Hawaii. And it kind of just went from there. You know, like I kind of just took a leap of faith and just said, balls to the walls, let's go. And that's how you started the company? Pretty much. Uh, you know, it's, it was, I was in a place where I was getting rejected and then an opportunity came about and I just jumped at the, jumped at the opportunity and just took it. Oh, that's cool. How, how long have you guys been um, open? And where are you guys open at? Uh, so we only have one location. It's in Pearl City, right on Cam Highway. Um, and July, we made three years. So I'd say oh, so you've been doing it for a little while then. Yeah, I, mean, I still think we're a new kid on the block. But <laughs> three, three years is still a long time. Yeah, for sure. So like... How, I, what I'm trying to understand is how, many, how much products for detailing would entail a whole store? Like in my head, I'm just soap, wax, your clay, and, a, and rags. Like how could that, that could fit in my bedroom? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> what else do you have in there that like, I, like what would you find in your store? You know what I mean? Like if I were to go in your store, like what kind of stuff would be in there? Um, pretty much anything that has to do with detailing, anything that has a motor. So you got uh, air fresheners, you got polishers for people that you know want to actually apply the wax with a machine. Um, like you said, soaps. We got detail sprays for those anal retentive people that want to wipe their truck down 42 times a day. We have got <laughs> the waxes, uh, tire cleaners. You know, tire shines, oh, that's right. apparel, drying towels, uh, buckets, wash mitts, brushes. Uh, I mean, it could go on and on. We have, I believe, we just did inventory. I think it's about 820 SKUs, different products. Oh, wow. In the store. Yeah. Okay, so you do need a store then, not a bedroom. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to sell out of a bedroom in my house. Oh, okay. So that's why. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so uh, obviously you know how to detail cars but from what i look on your instagram you guys teach classes also right yeah so we do two classes a, a month um every first saturday is a basics course which kind of goes over um pretty much what it is the basics uh setting up your two bucket wash method how to properly wash a car um how to you know clean the interior how to wax how to use the cool foam guns that everybody sees on Instagram and probably your neighbor shooting down the car, shooting the soap down. Yeah. And every third Saturday is the uh, intro to polishing course. So a lot of people want to actually polish and use an actual polish on their car, but they're scared. And so we kind of take that away that you get hands-on experience when you take that class and you get to use actual machines on a car. Oh, so that's where I come in. Like, whenever you guys have these classes, you're more than welcome to use my truck. And you guys can polish the shit off it <laughs> with the buffer thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. <laughs> so, okay, so obviously you have your store open during this COVID time. Like, I would assume a lot of people would come check it out because they're at home bored. They probably want to pimp out their car. Like, is that true or... You, you, took, you guys took a hit. Um, in the very beginning, when for COVID first hit, we didn't even know if we we're going to be allowed to be open because the government was saying, you know, trying to deem what was essential and what wasn't. Mm. And so we kind of dipped in that first two to three weeks. Um, and then after that, it just took off like crazy. Um, and it just kind of never stopped. And like you said, it's just because everybody's stuck at home. And we'll, everybody's, everybody's excuse for not washing car is time. But when you're yeah. stuck at home, what do you have? Lots yeah. of time. And then your wife is like, hey, wash the car. Like, oh, I got to get some cool products. Yeah. So <laughs> what I've noticed from being your friend and all your 
Instagram posts, you're starting to do a lot of social media and these videos, bro. Like, I gotta admit, you is you come out with some corny stuff, but it's funny and it, and it's <laughs> it's it does what it's supposed to. It's captivating and like, bro. I mean, we made videos for club stuff back in the day, and and Shit, now you're yeah. doing it for um for your company, and I. I think it's super cool. Like, how do you come up with the ideas for your videos? Like, if anybody, uh, if, if anybody <laughs> needs to check out his videos, it's on Hawaii Detail Garage on IG. And he does a lot of promo videos, but it's in a way where it's, it's very silly. And I don't know. I don't know how you come up with some of those ideas. You know, uh, honestly, I, I really don't know. It just kind of comes from consuming a lot of, a lot of things on Instagram and, the new one, TikTok and all those, and, you know, I see videos and then, or I hear a certain sound or song and I'm like, well, I could use that to promote this new product that we got coming out. And then, like you said, all those AGM videos we did. Um, <laughs> what, I, what, I no <laughs> <laughs> what I noticed a lot about your videos is you definitely like to twerk a lot. And if that's what you're consuming on IG is a bunch of dudes <laughs> twerking. I don't know, maybe. Why is it gotta be dudes? You're it? Cause you're a dude and you're twerking on IG. <laughs> <laughs> but your no. video, though, like, um, for a marketing standpoint, I I think it's an awesome idea, and and like I reposted, and everybody was like, "What is that?" It's like super funny, and it's like people are, like see your stuff, and that's that's the name of the that's, game, right? That's that's exactly, exactly why you do it. Speaking of um, videos, like we did when we were doing our Artist Groove Network videos, we did a lot of compilations in my apartment. And I remember you were, were the guy that had no boundaries. Like you, we dressed you up like Rihanna. You had a bra. Like you went full <laughs> tilt with our videos and you sold it. So it's like you're never, you never shied away from being in the spotlight doing something very crazy and, and i guess you Spotlight still don't you know what I mean? yeah yeah <laughs> so if you guys ever want to see that video we're gonna play it for you later on <laughs> <laughs> so what else you been up to man so you're a dad yes. and you you bought a house in kahalu right uh yes we just so moved what's... uh pre-covid like january we moved in oh was that recently yeah <laughs> We closed like end of December and moved in January. And then we had February and then March and then COVID. And yeah, it's been Well, crazy. at least you had a lot of time to do stuff with the fam and, and fix your house, whatever needed to be fixed. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So one thing about your, from, from your house is I got to go there a lot during COVID is because you have a, um, a home gym. And for me, I couldn't, get to go 24 hour fitness and i watched you create your home gym from a bunch of dumbbells to what it is now and you you kind of have a problem <laughs> like you, <laughs> you every time i went to your house there's another piece every of equipment week. yeah and it was it's very elaborate like it, it's it's a it has everything that that anybody would need so what is your obsession with uh, fitness and how did you get into like turning your whole like bottom floor of your house into a gym? Um, I don't know. I've always kind of been into fitness. That's why I was a trainer back in the day. Um, but making the bottom of my house, I shouldn't say that, that makes it sound bad <laughs> or huge. <laughs> making the back area of my house into a, a complete gym was kind of a, a pivot move for me because when COVID first hit, we didn't know if we we're gonna be open. And so first thing I thought of was, well, we just moved into this house. I got a mortgage to pay for. I can't have zero income. What can I do? Well, I can detail cars and I can train. I can train people. So I went and you know, I built a home gym complete to where I could do with my clients if needed a full entire, a full body workout. Oh, so you're taking clients um, to train at your at your home gym? No, it, it was the plan if oh. I wasn't able to stay open. <laughs> <laughs> I 
So you're I still see. the only other member of the gym. Oh, okay. Well, that's good. <laughs> but every, I mean, you know your stuff and you do promo videos on the um, products that you use and for, I guess, each. Um, oh, yeah. yeah you're it? talking about reviews? The reviews? That's the one. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's how I kind of learned out about all the stuff that I was buying. But I, I didn't see anybody here in Hawaii doing it. And I'm on this Facebook forum. Uh, local Facebook forum talking about it talks about equipment and nobody was doing it so I thought oh I got extra time I'll just try and do it um, and it's just more of just kind of informing and giving my opinion on what um, the equipment that I buy or I buy and flip or buy and resell so you were um, when when you got into health and fitness you kind of started off in when you were in college as a nutritionist right yeah. And then how did that transform into becoming a personal trainer? Well, I've, I mean, I was an, an athlete my entire life. And so I went to school to, and I got my sports nutrition degree from UH. And then I went into personal training. Um, I just really liked helping people, um, you know, helping people achieve them lose weight, build muscle, or some just mobility, um, and just kind of helping them change their lives for the better. That was like the main goal behind everything. Um, and the personal training was like the caveat to help all those people. And then you got into bodybuilding. And how did that go? Like that, I mean, take some, like you got to have confidence. I mean, that's, you're up on stage in a G-string, like... <laughs> pretty much oiled up (laughs) well it was i remember it this situation vividly where i expressed some interest in doing a show but this one person that i'm not going to mention told me that i would never be able to do it and that's all it took oh i said oh yeah okay fine and then i did it and then i kind of got hooked with that being said you can i don't think you could ever detail my truck (laughs) you're right uh, but <laughs> but so that's how you got into it so how did that play out like you you did a couple of local tournaments uh yeah so i did let's see i did one in 2011 two in 2012 then i took some time off to gain some size and then i did my last two in 2014 with my very last show being i really wanted to do a mainland show so oh, okay. we flew to vegas um, and I did a, a show in Vegas. How was that compared to the Hawaii show? Um, it was definitely, I mean, I don't like to put down <laughs> the people that run the shows in Hawaii, but it was a lot more organized. It just oh, seemed I like see. they've been doing it for a lot more, more, like, a lot longer. So everything was all streamlined and it was quick, quick, quick. And anybody that's been to a local bodybuilding show, they know that they start at 7 p.m., but it goes to 2 a.m. Oh yeah, I've been to those. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so are you going to ever try and get back into competition or are you going to That's that's the the question that now that people have been seeing me work out again that they they ask me are, are you training for another show and this is It it piques my interest to do one maybe for my son, you know, when he's a little bit older I can understand but not not anytime soon. I think but I it have is one a- last ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be awesome. We'll definitely sponsor you. <laughs> <laughs> that would be cool. But, but I'm going to be in a master's division. Old man, Bibbidi boy. Or oh, the Makuli League. They make you wear Bibbidi's <laughs> instead of G-string. <laughs> the Makuli League division. You got to wear, yes. <laughs> you gotta wear <laughs> a skirt. <laughs> Laohala skirt. (laughs) Let's see. So back in the day, I met you through Chris, right? Yeah. You were working at Skin. And then Skin kind of closed and we, um, I had the I Know Care store and you came to work for me. And we're doing a local promotion. It was recess, right? At at Venus. And that's when you kind of started interning with us. And you had a clothing line too. It was straight country clothing. Yep. Missed that clothing line. 
Shout out to um Kael Kael, yeah. Kael Mao. Yeah. <laughs> so you became part of Artist Group Network as an intern and and you were working with us and that was that's when kind of I got to know you and like we did a lot of stuff together with um promotions and just kicking it like so on your free time like you used to come over and we used to hang out at the house and like you you got pretty crazy back in the day huh <laughs> yeah uh there was a lot of ruckus and i was young dumb and full of yeah <laughs> <laughs> full of nonsense I, yeah yeah I, definitely a lot of fun times but a lot of life lessons that i've learned what was some of the fun times you had with um, Cruising With Us and Artist Group Network? Uh, well, definitely throwing huge uh, ice balls out your window onto the oh. was that basketball courts or ten I tennis court about courts. That. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, we used to freeze big balloons of water, and they would it would be like. Oh, at least like 15 it pound was, yeah, ice ball massive and we would whip <laughs> those things out of the window and it would just explode on the tennis court below and we would have a i don't know why we did that we was just something to do but <laughs> a couple of days like we did it for a couple of days and then for some reason like they caught on to it and we, there were like letters on in the, <laughs> the, elevator. In the elevator saying if anybody's caught throwing ice, <laughs> ice balls out they will and then it had a list of things that could happen to you if it were to land on you you could lose unconsciousness you could die <laughs> i think we took one of those letters too huh? no, nobody yeah. ever nobody ever found out that that was us until now probably <laughs> maybe we shouldn't have admitted that yeah we used to play with that uh used to have that batman light we used to shine it all over Conway. Oh, that's right. <laughs> the potato gun. So yeah, DJ Hopper Boy. Yeah. <laughs> DJ Hopper Boy made this um, out of PVC. It was a potato launcher. <laughs> and it was it was like you stuffed the potato in through the the, the big long cannon <laughs> of it. And then you sprayed hairspray. And then you capped it up and he had a like a ignition switch from the um like a grill. I don't yeah. know how he made it. Timo and that thing that used thing. to firebomb the tom- the potato out of the window onto Kulana Nani's wall across <laughs> side the- wall. Yeah. <laughs> I don't read <laughs> So we used to do that. <laughs> I remember the Batman light though, it was a gobo light, and that thing like could project like onto the mountain and that thing yeah oh, that. so we used to put those things up bef- in front of our events and uh, yeah we took it home and <laughs> shined it on kulana nani and nicole allows and cars and everything yeah <laughs> <laughs> were you there when we dropped the water balloon out of um hush no i don't think oh, so okay never mind <laughs> and it landed on the car it was it I feel like I remember night. this. I, yeah. I mean, Hush was definitely probably the most drunk I've been. Like, I think I was oh, just yeah. drunk the entire time. Yeah, we did a lot of crazy stuff during Hush. It was <laughs> so cool. When we used to stay in the hotel right there. Yeah, it was uh, Monarch. Hawaiian Monarch? Hawaii Monarch Hotel, that's right. So what did you learn from cruising with us and doing all our ruckus? <laughs> uh, well, I mean... I think, I think Taylor touched on the biggest lesson that you guys talked about in the first episode was uh, it was probably a reference to me, um, but it was if if you are the man, you don't have to tell anybody. Everybody will know. Yeah. And I I vividly remember you telling you in, in or telling you you telling me in your office because I don't know I did something. I, I was, <laughs> I was, yeah, yeah, you used to fuck full, up a lot. <laughs> full of nonsense. I was full of nonsense. And I remember when you telling me, this was before a event or something, and you told me that flat out, and I still remember it to this day. And I think I've texted you every now and then, 
asking you, yeah. thanking you about, I don't know, that's probably one of the biggest life lessons that I've learned, especially during that time period. Well, at it, that time, it got crazy. We were throwing events and you were young and like you had all this exposure and like probably all the girls ran to you and like it was just a lot for somebody that young to deal with it. I just realized now you said you weren't even 21 at that time. Like, <laughs> so that makes me think we're sneaking your ass into the club. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> but yeah, at the time, like you were young and, and like in the industry, it can get to your head. And yeah, like, yeah. I remember you were kind of, taken by it and I'm like right you don't gotta tell everybody that you're the man like they're gonna know like just be yourself and do your thing and they're gonna know and if they don't then they don't need to know who cares like but you always were receptive to whatever I was trying to teach you and granted I'm not the best person to be teaching people because I do plenty I did plenty crazy stuff too but (laughs) we're all learning together but you always had that it factor like you always had the charisma and you always had a good um drive about whatever you did and it's cool to see that you're transforming that same drive and and ethic into your your business as well as your family so you have a son right you have a son yeah he's uh that's colton he's about to be four years old four years old yeah yeah four years old that's crazy it's, yeah, it's, I tell people it's the best but hardest thing that I've ever had to deal with. What do you mean? Well, I mean, obviously it's the best thing. Like when people say there's no kind of love until you have a kid, like that's a hundred percent true. Like I it, definitely nothing that. matches that. Yeah. But it's hard, you know, from newborn, it's, you don't get any sleep. And then it just, the challenges change throughout the years. Like, and I'm like, now he's now he's talking a lot and his favorite word is no and why <laughs> so you know dealing with that and kind of this whole covid thing and not having school and doing this whole virtual school is a whole other thing oh yeah how's that going but for it, you um he's actually just like went back to in person one day a week but okay. it's for like a, it's like an hour which is i'll take an hour any day <laughs> <laughs> So are they going to go back to normal school after the Christmas break or you're still up in the air? I think it's a blended thing. I think because there's different classes that go to that campus. So I think they do Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or, you know, they, they kind of rotate it so that not everybody's there at the campus. So how is the virtual learning? Like, does do you do it with him or your wife? Yeah. Well, well it just depends. If my wife's working, um, then I'll do it with him. But they're only 25 to 30 minutes long because they are three and four-year-olds. And oh. Unless it's an iPad watching, I don't know, Disney Junior, they won't sit in front of the, the screen that long. Oh, yeah, for sure. So it's a challenge to just get him to sit in front of a screen, just trying to actually learn something. Oh, that's true. So are you thinking about having any more kids? Or? <laughs> you know, if you met my son, you would understand that. <laughs> so one and done <laughs> well, I, I don't know we'll wait i shouldn't even ask you i should ask your wife does your wife want more kids <laughs> she 100 percent agrees with me that at this time no maybe if he's five or six maybe i don't know it's <laughs> he's he's a ball of energy i mean you've uh, you met him a couple of times yeah, yeah, for sure. He's definitely <laughs> he definitely has your um energy, which is a good thing. You just gotta yeah. direct it, direct it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so he since you're an athlete, is he into sports and stuff? Uh, at the moment, no. He's into Minecraft. <laughs> oh, video games. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't. I, you know, like it's. I don't even know how to play that thing, but that guy, that guy knows how to play that thing like the back of his hand. It's, it's oh yeah my it's, daughter's into this thing called roblox and uh, like is that like, i don't she, she she's playing is that right like now. Minecraft? something like that and you build stuff and you cruise with your friends <laughs> and then she'll be in her room telling her friends what to do and i'm like what are you talking to your friends like that well she's not doing what i'm t- like we're trying to get to a, 
like is you play together yeah. and it's I don't understand it, but I guess <laughs> like it's a big deal for kids. They like it. Yeah. yeah it's called Roblox. Know. I haven't played a video game in a long time. <laughs> so what do you do on your free time, man? You seem like you're very busy. Free time is uh working out and spending time with my, my son, you know. Not learning Minecraft, but trying to get him to play <laughs> sports, take him in the backyard, we have a park in the back, you know, stuff like that. Nothing, definitely not going out anymore. <laughs> Do you miss it? Going out? Yeah. I definitely miss the, the interaction with people. I, I would say that I'm like, a, I'd say I'm an extrovert. Um, and so I, I miss that, that. But, but I don't miss being drunk and the hangovers and <laughs> and what the life that? lessons and all that <laughs> stuff. just yeah i don't i don't miss doing the dumb stuff but i definitely miss mingling with the people and, and like said networking like that was that was another lesson that i learned your network oh. is your net worth i remember you telling oh me that. yeah definitely and you're um well you're like when you were young like you had you're a good promoter. Like you got people to come to the club to see you. And that's half of the battle right there. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty sure that you apply that same kind of promoting skills to your company, but how can you relate the two? Like just the way you talk to people or like when they come into your store or like, I mean, I'm sure that they kind of intertwine a little bit. Huh? Yeah. Well, I definitely learned when I was with AGN, how to market myself as a person and, and also promote the bigger actual picture of the event or whatever was happening. And it kind of, it kind of just, like you said, trickled right into that. And so um, I kind of take a lot of the personal aspects of promoting and I, I put that on social media. So I, I do dumb videos, or I post <laughs> dumb videos of my workers and that kind of, you know, brings the consumer's walls down because they're not, they now see somebody, a familiar face when they walk into the store for the first time. They're like, hey, that's the guy that did the, the drumming video, you know, so therefore they feel more comfortable talking to us or talking to me or anybody. Oh, so, so they, they, yeah. you, that's smart. You put a, your face to relate to the product and then when they come in and, and see it, it's like, oh, that's, that, that makes sense. Right. Oh, there's, there's a donkey or, you know what I mean? <laughs> hey. There's the guy that's, tw that's working every time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> so how's being an employer, now that you have your own business, uh, you have a bunch of people working under you, how do you balance that? Like for me, it was hard because most of the, my employees were my friends. Like when I managed, I don't care. And my friends would always try to take advantage, not really take advantage, but see what they could get away with. Right. And like a couple of times I would have to kind of be like, okay, you can't do that. And they're like, what you mean? Like, we were just doing this the other week. And it's like, you had to find, I had a hard time f um, finding the line in between friend and boss but when I figured it out, then I could kind of navigate through that a lot easier. But how, how is that working for you? So luckily, I mean, I consider my staff my friends, but we didn't, all my staff, I didn't know them prior to them working at the store. Mm. So from when I hired them, I, I you know, I, I laid down the, the boundaries. Like, you know, I said, I can be the coolest boss ever as long as the work gets done. If Everything is done. I have no problem with you cruising and doing all that. But it's when stuff that needs to get done and you're, you know, on your phone in the back or whatever you're doing, then that's when I have a problem. And luckily they've been super, you know, super awesome. And so I haven't had really any much issues. You know, you got some here and there, but for the most part, it's, it's been pretty solid. My, my, my core of employees are, are solid. So you ever had to like, had to let somebody go or like, yeah, but I, I feel like that comes with the territory. You got people that um, don't show up on time, um, you know, just like basic stuff. It just is, I don't know when you're have a job, I think, you know, being on time is, I would think is standard, but apparently not, but <laughs> you move on and you find somebody. 
Yeah, I didn't have Absolutely. problems with that. Like, I fired my friend's girlfriend for stealing shirts. <laughs> I didn't yeah. care. Like, <laughs> yes. yeah, yeah. Luckily, I don't think I've had anybody steal anything from the store. I, and like I said, I'm close enough to them that there's a trust and a bond that they wouldn't do something like that. Well, in my opinion, I feel like <laughs> you'd be a good a good boss because you have good leadership skills, and I feel like people would not want to disappoint you that would be uh, my opinion <laughs> i appreciate that but yeah i mean i try i try to what is that lead by example like i'm i, I tell them flat out too i said i'll never ask you to do something that i'm not going to do myself so you'll see me working on the floor you'll see me ringing up customers you see me scrubbing toilets it, i mean it's just that's just i don't know the name of the game when you you're in charge, I guess. I don't know. So, so back in the day when you were working with Artist Groove, like what kind of crazy shit that you got into that I didn't know about? Because that's what I wanted to ask, like everybody. Like, what was going on during the times I wasn't there, or during the times that I didn't, I didn't know what was happening? Like, what were you guys doing behind my back, basically? Cause you got to deal with that as an employer. So I want to know what was going on behind my back as an employer also. <laughs> I, honestly, I don't think there was anything that crazy. I mean, I, the only thing that I can think of that you didn't know about, but I ended up telling you was my mom, my mom came out to one of her events and she, she had this chick <laughs> by her neck up against the wall and she was going to pound this chick out for stealing her purse. I do remember that <laughs> vaguely. <laughs> Your mom's but a firecracker mom, too, though. <laughs> but she's only four foot eleven. Okay, so yeah. it, she, I don't know. She, yeah. I think that's the only. I don't know. I don't. I can't think of anything other than because every other time that there was ruckus that involved me, you I was were there. either there, you were there bailing me out or fucking giving <laughs> me scoldings, <laughs> or, or both at the same time. <laughs> Oh. So you were with us all the way to like, what was it Passport? Yeah, Passport. Uh, so you did um, Cirque with us. What else? Zanzibar. Church. Zanzibar, yeah, that's Zanzibar. right. So like back in the day, what was your favorite club? Like I, I can't even think like how long ago that was. That uh, must have been like over 10 something years. Yeah. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, well, the most ruckus was Venus, was Recess. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, I think my favorite venue was Cirque. Just oh, because Cirque it was, was like, sex, yeah. It was like a lobby of theater, right? But yeah. And yeah. in order to get in, like you had a door girl, right? And you paid your cover, but then you took the escalator up and once you went the escalator up you're in the party like it was yeah. just like a i don't know it was a you know you could make your grand entrance whoever yeah. you were and whoever thought you thought you were <laughs> <laughs> that was that was a sexy venue though glass was right up against uh it's white DJ. so yeah yeah and we had and then, two gogo dancers in the window and like we had a big gobo light shining yeah shining and yeah, that, I forgot. I always forget about that venue. That venue was literally they had a circ kind of circus show. Show, yeah, yeah. And it was like a auditorium, but prior to the auditorium was like a, like you said a big huge lobby, and it was upstairs. And we turned and they had bars and stuff, and we turned that into the nightclub. And, and on the side side the was cabanas. Were they cabanas? Yeah, we had cabanas. It was like the VIP if you had bottle service or something. Yeah. And I remember we had that venue from ground zero. Like nobody did it. And, or oh, I think Ryan did something. But when we had it, we had it on a Wednesday. And it was dead. Like, oh, we had to build it up from no one. Like there's no we, foot traffic or nothing. Because we moved, we moved the Wednesday party to there, right? Yeah. Yeah. After Venus, we went to visions and then we went to yeah. Cirque. Yeah, that that was a that was a cool I think we we were there for a while too, huh? 
I remember yeah, doing I think, New Year's Eve over there. I think a lot of people like that spot because the parking, there was a lot of parking and it was right there. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, you also did W with us, huh? Yeah, that was like the super like classy and yeah. suits That's, and that was one of my favorite venues, the the W Hotel. I think it's Lotus now, yeah. Yeah, I think I think there's still well, I don't know about this pandemic thing, but from what I remember that they're still operating as Lotus. Yeah, so we we would turn that Was that um, a restaurant? Res- like Yeah, it was, was it Diamond Head Grill or something like that. And we had turned that into a nightclub. And that was, yeah, that was a sexy event. I remember moving so, like, all the tables. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you got something out of that. <laughs> <laughs> but it was pretty much at that time was me, you, Chris, and Taylor, right? Oh, and Peter. Yeah. yeah, Peter was on, like, he would come when he was feeling it. Yeah, yeah. But- yeah. And t- I think Taylor was just getting getting in. Like he was just oh, starting was, to come around. Yeah, he was he was in DJ Hopper Boy. He was filming all the filming. Yeah, he was doing too. his flip cam and his flashlight. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, those times are like pretty. Those times are fun, but everybody got to grow up eventually, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. At least we all like to think so. So what, you, how did you transition out of the nightclub industry? Like you were, did you just get too old or like you just, I shouldn't say that because I'm older and I'm still <laughs> in it. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. You know, I, I honestly, I did some stuff after AGN with Boys Finest. Shout out Fella there. Um, oh yeah. Yep. Did some concerts and stuff with them and some nightclub stuff. But then I met my wife now and I remember <laughs> She she basically gave me the ultimatum because she knew who I was or what I did, right? A whore. Promo- I mean, a uh, um, promoter. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> have there's to many edit. other names for it. <laughs> <laughs> a man whore. <laughs> oh, God. No, so she, I mean, she used to come to the parties before. And so she oh, knew. So she knows about all of us. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she does know all about us. And so she basically gave me the ultimatum and said, if I'm serious, then I'll stop going out. And I took it serious enough to, we're here now, how many years married? Oh God, four, four years married? Yeah, Yeah, my son's being four, yeah. Four years married, I think nine years together total, so. I remember your wedding. Your wedding is super cool. It was was different. It was like in a, um, it was in a building, right? On the uh, Plaza Club. That's the one. How did you guys wanna, pick that venue? Well, our biggest thing was we wanted to be different. We've been to lots of weddings, and the weddings are usually Kualoa or outside and stuff like that. And so we wanted to do something that was different. So we ended up finding this venue, Plaza Club. And I think we're one of the first people or couple to have an actual um, wedding there that weren't members. Like oh, they really? Opened it up. I think they were hurting for money, and that's why they opened it up to anybody. Oh. And we also didn't want to deal with the elements because we were getting, we got married in February, and it was still kind of rainy. So we didn't want to, you know, we didn't want us and all our guests to be <laughs> watching us get married and <laughs> get rained on. That place, I remember it. I oh, oh, go that place, Plaza Club. <sighs> All the business people, that's where they all hang out. Well, it's no longer anymore. They closed. That, that's right. That's I think right. It was like a year ago, maybe two yeah. years ago. Yeah. But yes, that's where I, the, the business people had their meetings. It was cool because like, you guys had like where you had your wedding and then the next level was the reception and, and it was so convenient. Like, right. you know what I mean? It, like, it, it was just like a one-stop shop and... You don't have to I, drive I, nowhere, was, you just... <laughs> yeah, and it was simple, and it was elegant, and it, it was kind of perfect. That, that was definitely something that a lot more people should look into. I don't know if they, they do, but... Well, me, me and my wife agree, if you ask us now if we could do a wedding again, we, 
we would just take all that money and just go travel. I mean, it was awesome. It was an awesome venue and all that, but it was just a lot of stress. <laughs> so to get back to your videos. So we have a video from when we are doing, we used to do these AGN compilation videos. And one of them was with one of the radio guys. And it was, dip, it was kind of a skit where you dressed up as Rihanna, the singer. <laughs> do you remember that? Yes, I do. Yes. So, that's, my, that's my claim to fame, man. That was, that like was the only time I was ever, I was, that was like the only ever time I was on TV. <laughs> so so if, if people watch this video, like the best, to me, the best part about this video was how serious you took the role and how believable you made it. But the outtakes was the best because you got slam danced by Micah Banks. <laughs> like, do you remember? Well, a, cu a couple times, yes. He's, he actually hit me and he actually <laughs> like threw me into your tub. And did I like you smash smacked. your head against the wall? No, it was a tub. I, oh. He like tripped me and I smashed the, like, the right side of my like, eye into the actual tub. <laughs> See, I have yeah, a scar over there, Michael Banks. <laughs> 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 but it was, it was back, back in those days, like, we pretty much did whatever we wanted. So, like, any of those videos, like, Taylor could make it look realistic. So, like, it looked real that you were getting hit, but I guess you really yeah. was getting hit. <laughs> we, were, we were doing TikTok before TikTok was around. That's true, right? So, that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Like, back in those days, we made all these compilations – and we're the only ones doing it. We'd put it up on MySpace, right? Or fa Facebook or whatever. I it think was. Facebook was just like was, was the one? To become a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that was our promotion. And now it's like, that's what everybody does now. And all these girls with TikTok and, and you with your twerking. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, nobody can get over that one. Like I did other videos too, like drumming. Just, <laughs> everybody refers back to the... The apron and me shaking my ass. Did you ever show your employees the Rihanna video? I did. I did. Oh, okay. Because they asked me they asked me one day, like, after putting, putting out all these newer videos, they're like, you're not shame? I said, bro, no. I've been on, <laughs> like, local television with a pink bra on and hoop earrings. Like, That's nothing right. can get worse than that. Taylor like, put it on Tiny <laughs> TV, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> So you had a, earrings. <laughs> I, I don't even, whose bra was that? That was, um, <laughs> I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember. I don't remember. even know whose earrings those were either. <laughs> Probably the same person. <laughs> Where were we at my house? Uh, yes. Oh, I have they no were just, idea. They were just in the bathroom. I just remember the concept of, I was when, Chris Brown and the whole Rihanna thing was going on. And then Michael Banks was over and said, hey, we should do this video. And then everybody's like, oh, I'll be this guy and I'll be this guy. And then you, I remember, I think it was you said, it was like, well, who's going to be Rihanna? And then everybody just went like this. <laughs> you're, you're the perfect Rihanna. What are you talking about? <laughs> mm. <laughs> you're, hey. darker to, you're darker than all of us. <laughs> Then I just had you, to. You can twerk. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't twerk in that video. But, no. I mean, I committed. You did commit, for sure. Oh, head, earrings. We're, gonna, we're definitely going to play this at the end of this <laughs> podcast, just so people can see that video, for sure. Oh, now I'm going to have customers coming in and be like, hey. Hello, umbrella, umbrella. <laughs> umbrella. <laughs> umbrella, you get the pink bra still. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think if I had any fuck stories with you in the club. <laughs> no. I was None. smarter than that. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one time one of you fools forgot the tackle box. Do you remember that? Forgot the tackle box? Yeah. Inside. Yeah, you made me go on gay night to go get it. Yeah, so you so our night was Wednesday, right? And then yes, you one of you guys forgot our tackle box, which was like all our stuff for the event. Stuff to hang the banners and the scissors. Yeah. 
staple gun or whatnot. Yeah. And anybody doesn't know Venus on what is it? Saturdays was a uh, was a gay night. Yeah. No, it wasn't gay night. It was a burlesque for show. For penis. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> so I brought you guys over there on when, on Saturday to go get the taco box. I think we're and the taco out. box is in the dressing room, huh? Yes. Because back in the day, Venus had like a, a stage area. Uh, well, what was it? It was like, like a, a DJ booth thing. Yeah. And then in the back was like a, There's a door. changing There's room. Like, it was like a closet. Yeah. It was literally like two feet by four feet. Was, no, there was, and behind that was a, was a changing room. Like, it was a fool. Or maybe you didn't go back there. But wherever the taco box was, you had to go through gate. <laughs> yes. Right? I remember. We were, I think we were going out somewhere. And then we were yeah. like, oh, since we're over here, let's just go, go get the taco box. <laughs> and I think, I think it was me, you, and Chris might have been. And then you pulled yeah. up, and then Chris opened his door, and then I right, go get it. I'm like, well, why do I got to go get it? <laughs> you forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody I guarantee, me. It wasn't me. I guarantee it wasn't me. you never forgot it again. <laughs> we didn't. We never, ever forgot it ever again. Whew. Oh, man. Cirque was good fun, though. I, I forgot about that. Like, oh, we had that place jumping. Like, that club wasn't even a club. Like, we created that out of nothing. And it, it was just. Ryan, Ryan did his uh, Scorpio Leap. Yeah. Scorp- that. Part. He did that. That's how we got turned on to that idea. And then I met the owners and stuff. So I think Ryan might have been the first one to do it, Golden Child. And then we were the first to ever do it on a weekend, a weekday. Weekday. I mean, we had that place jumping on a Wednesday. Like, yeah, because it wasn't, it wasn't heard of like Waikiki going out on a Wednesday night. Yeah, and it, it was. I mean, other than. O Lounge and Venus, right? There wasn't another, any other place or well, DMBs. But that was after we got, you know, the DMBs came after Venus and O Lounge. No, I think D- DMBs was during. Remember, you guys used to go in the line and go pass well, out. But I mean, like, o-, o Lounge, I think, was the first Wednesday night party, at, I'm assuming. Oh. The vertical Junkies. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then we started Recess, and then I think DMB started after that, and then everybody started going to DMBs. And so we would, me, Chris, and Taylor, then would all go and fly all the cars in the parking lots. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> I don't know, man. Like those days were crazy. Like our my apartment, like oh, we used to, we used to fucking oh, we used to throw house parties there, and it that that thing was like such fights, a... the fights used we used to always watch over there i remember when they had the the outage the power outage the, the oh power that's outage, right we're all at your house yeah we used to like have rock band parties there yeah we'd go for hours playing rock band and drinking and it would have and like a bunch of girls and we just i think um that time period in my life was very like that was like a good time period in my life I was, that was the only time I lived by myself, like with no roommates or whatever. Although you and Chris was my roommates pretty much. Yeah, we were there like every day. Yeah, Chris was definitely there every day. Like I would wake up and he'd be in my fucking house. I remember fucking you guys freezing his thing on his nose and cutting it off. Oh, (laughs) his, he had a wart, huh? Yeah. Oh, we freeze the fuck out of that thing. We had a, um, I don't know what it was. It was some kind of doctor shows. Pen thing. Was yeah, it, you, it you pushed it down and it made that thing like, I don't know if it had nitrogen in there or what, but it made it, it made it super, super cold. And yeah. I just like mashed it up against his nose and he'd like, <laughs> his eyes would tear. Yeah. And then we do that like a bunch of times and it, it went away and it just never came back. No. <laughs> I should send him a bill for that. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, you owe me like eight grand for what? Your <laughs> fucking mole removal. <laughs> I'm surprised that never came up in you guys' episode. Fuck. Although I'm you know pretty sure. You know shit that we couldn't, like we didn't I talk about? I was going to say, there's probably, like I said, you probably could do like five or six episodes of just his stories. 
Yeah. Well, just me. I could probably do them with you too. <laughs> I don't have that many stories. We could do it in one episode and it would just be, remember the time when you're an idiot and you did this and then the other time when you're a fucking idiot. And I remember you got knocked this. out one time. I was at Hush. <laughs> yes. And I wasn't even fighting. I was I trying know. to break up the fight. I and just I got remember. fucking sidekicked. <laughs> I and I fucking knocked out my tooth. Do you remember that? <laughs> Your I yes, your tooth did get knocked out. Yeah. Well, oh, I guess you would remember that. Is that the same tooth? Yeah, it's this one. Is that a fake uh, one? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so what I remember there was like a big brawl. It was and, right outside in that hallway yeah. lobby thing. And then, I just remember you running over there. So then we were like in behind everybody, and then Taylor was kind of where like halfway in between you and me. And he yelled at me. He's like, dad, Kaika is getting into a fight. And then all he did was look at you and then just turn to me like, oh shit. I'm just like, what happened? And then you're like sitting on the ground and you're just like holding your mom. Like what happened? And then Taylor was like, oh, somebody kicked him. And I'm like, who? And he's like, I don't know. Like, and we're like, well, how, why did he kick you? And you're like, I don't know. I was breaking up the fight. And I was like, <laughs> All right, I don't, I don't understand what just happened, but <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you were always trying to be the peacekeeper, you know what I mean? Like even that time at Cirque, I, that, that um, just yeah. I, that's another valuable lesson. Man. People fighting, Raja. You yeah, keep doing your thing over there, bro. I'ma stay <laughs> right over here. Unless you know him, though. And bro, you know what I've learned? Never break up a chick fight. That's you, you brought, got punched, right? No, yeah, I was my, yeah, I was some so, something else. But I, I yeah. like, I broke up chicks' fights, and chicks when they fight, they're not like dudes trying to look cool and bang it out. They will do whatever <laughs> it takes to hurt the person that they're fighting. Scratch, <laughs> pull hair, like whatever, like throw shoes. Like I broke, try to break up a chick fight, and oh, I got scratched and like. Brah. And then the girl that we were breaking got mad at me. <laughs> Why'd you break it up? I was like, because you guys are beefing in my fucking event. Like, <laughs> oh, yeah, girl, breaking up chicks fights, like, fight. <laughs> Work it out, girls. I'm, yeah. lit, I'm not trying to nah. break that up. That's I look worse up. than both of the two girls that were fighting. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, Fuck that. Yeah. Um, so I was definitely not a, I mean, I have this tooth to forever remember that memory. I have the look on Taylor's face when you got kicked in my head, like, like I, his face I is like, Dad, Kaiko. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember uh, Ray Senior telling you guys that I broke something at the DJ booth and that I could never come back to Hush again that same night. <laughs> I really like, no, he didn't. <laughs> I was like, and then I he think took you, a nap on the front. <laughs> no, and then you told me that, and I was like, "What? What do you mean? I didn't break anything. <laughs> fucking, fucking, my tooth is gone. I got broke." <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that was like the downward. That was like around the downward spiral of shigs. Shigs, oh, I forgot. Shigs, we got your name from. So, if you don't remember, you were called Shigs, and that was short. You kind of made it cool because your the full name was Shigley Pew, <laughs> and the reason why is my sister, who gets very creative with naming things. So we went to her apartment to help her move, and in her her. TV console that we're moving there was a lizard and she named that lizard Shigley Pew and for some reason that name transitioned to you and then we started calling you Shigley Pew <laughs> and then you made it then you owned it and made it um, Shigs. Shigs and then that was like oh that sounded cool and then you started using it didn't you have that on your license plate Shigs? Yeah well, my Tacoma it was Shigs with a Z and that and then, all became... <laughs> And then, and then I was a little, 
I was a little upset when uh, Caleb from the Green, his his nickname was Snakes. I was like, really? Oh, really? I'm Shigli Pew. I'm Shigs. Like you can't sh- Snakes. Like come on. Come on, stop copying. Y'all sound like some <laughs> Heidi. Sounds like some Pokemon. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so now it's time for the question of the week, man. What's the question of the week? Question of the week, guys, is what are the three three of the most favorite cars you've had? Three of the most favorite cars we had. Yeah, does that what if what if you only had three cars? <laughs> <laughs> they win by default. Wait, what's your three favorite cars you've had? There you go. Okay. Okay. So I guess because you're a detailer, you must have had a bunch of cars, right? So you want me to go first, or I, I would say vehicle, right? Three, what, th- my three favorite vehicles. Well, you, I'll go first then. You go first, yeah. So my my three favorite vehicles would be I used to have a um a, a GSXR motorcycle, Suzuki Jixer. It was a yellow one, and and I had a Yosh pipe on it, and it was I one that. of them. Yeah, one of the first bikes that I bought brand new. And that was like my baby. So I, I used to love that thing. That was probably my my favorite vehicle. Two, I used to have this um, Toyota mini truck. Yeah, it was one of those Kanye oh, boys. Yep, Kanye <laughs> action drop with the fat tires sticking out the side with oh the bazooka base too. Oh my God. I can't imagine you that. Yep. I can't imagine doing one. Four speed, yep. Yeah. It was a low maroon one. And, oh, for some reason, girls loved the mini truck. So, like, we'd go Ala Moana with it and, like, oh, everybody would come talk story with me. So, that was, like, <laughs> my thing. But, yeah, I loved that truck. It lasts forever. It was stick shift. That was my first stick shift. And it was a four speed. And it's, like, those t- old school Toyota 22R motors. It lasts forever. And, like, yeah, that Honestly, if I could get that thing back, I would buy it back. That was like that was something cool. Those things are a rare commodity now. Yeah, they probably big... still it probably still works. <laughs> yeah, guaranteed. The body must be all hash, but like I wouldn't mind <laughs> having a little fixer up kind of deal, like an old school Toyota mini truck. And then I would have to say my truck now, my Tacoma now, because I got a, f- a four door one and. The amount of time I spend with my daughter in it kind of makes me lo- love it more. And that would probably be my my top three. My first vehicle ever. So this is this is my first vehicle. It was called a, a GLC, a Mazda GLC. And I think GLC stood for great little car because it was <laughs> tiny. And I, I, I bought it. Um, I think I got it for graduation. So I got it for graduation and it was like my first car and, and hold on, we, I would try to fit like all the boys in there. We have like seven or eight people in that little thing and we'd be going to Wikes. What what year was it? <laughs> Whew, I don't even remember. It was probably a, in the eighties. Like the <laughs> car, the car was a 80 like, or early nineties. Oh, maybe it was a 90. The car was a 90. I don't know, but. Yeah, it was called a Mazda GLC. I guess that would be one of my favorite ones too, just because all the <laughs> moments I had in it. Like we got into some shit with that thing. So, what would be your your was it favorite? Oh, be- top before favorite I go, thing? I remember going off tangent. There was another bike you had, and then I remember. I think I might have been staying at your house that where the people stole it from Halyan Ole. Was yes, it, was I had another Jixer. It was Actually, a white. No, it was a Jixer, white GSXR. Was it? Yeah, it was white, right? And then you yeah. you ran downstairs and with the fucking samurai sword. Bat, yeah, yeah, or a bat or something. It was. But they so what happened it in was, a van, right? Yeah. So what? I you were that? I didn't remember that. So what happened was I was um my I had an alarm on the motorcycle, <coughs> and when the alarm went off, it triggered like this little beeper. So it was late at night and the beeper went off. And I'm like, what is that noise? Like half asleep. And then I realized what it was, but I'm on the ninth floor. <laughs> so I'm thinking, kid, okay, I'm probably be faster going down the, the running stairs. down the stairs than the elevator. So I'm like, oh, what if they got um, like a bunch of guys with them? <laughs> so I grabbed the first thing that I thought and I had like this decorative samurai sword. <laughs> it's on the top of your so TV. I, 
yeah, so I sprinted down the stairs with a samurai sword, and by the time I got down there, they were gone. Oh. And I was thinking, like, oh, what if, like, they weren't gone? Like, would I Zatuichi <laughs> these fuckers up, or like, what would have happened? <laughs> and I come to find out, there was a paper boy delivering paper, and he said he's seen everything, and it was a van, they pulled it in and left. But to be honest, I was probably a blessing in disguise with all the crazy stuff I was doing on motorcycles. And that's kind of when I found out I was having my daughter. So it was an easy transition to not have a motorcycle anymore. But yeah, I always wondered like, oh man, what would have happened if they weren't gone? And I had my samurai yeah. sword. I probably would have ginsued some fuck, fuck, fuck. Done, like, to be honest. Yeah. That was kind of a nuts. I remember that. Like, I didn't realize you were there. I, I was either there or I was, I don't know. How, I found out about it that same morning or night or whatever. So I just remember that story. I remember you, that bike wasn't even a month old, I think. Was no, it, it was, I had it for new? a while. No? Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, it was definitely brand new. I remember I, I used to keep it in the I don't care store for a little while. Because <laughs> I didn't want it to get stolen. <laughs> no, yeah. All right, back to what was it? Three vehicles, favorite vehicles I've I've had. Well, I only had three, unless you count my shop van. But we okay. Don't count that as one. So, um, current one, uh, twenty twenty Acura MDX, uh, the mommy daddy wagon. <laughs> we bought that to transport oh. the son to school and. I don't know, Costco runs and stuff like that. I would say my second favorite car, and you probably remember this car, was a 98, a white 98 Chevy Cavalier. Had a, the window crankers. I do remember that. It was always parked in your guest <laughs> parking at Haneano. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Was, yep, I remember. And then... Oh, kids yeah. nowadays they don't have to roll down their windows with the the cranker anymore they gotta like oh. i don't think my daughter ever like... seen that before <laughs> <laughs> yeah how uh, do you use it <laughs> <laughs> and then my favorite car or truck uh, i wouldn't be a local boy in hawaii without one uh my tacoma so you have one but i actually sold mine <laughs> in january i sold it just on a whim i never drove it I had a, it was a 2013 and only had 18,000 miles on it. What? So that, yeah. Because I was working from home. Oh, you must have got a plus two. It, it was probably kept nicely. You're a detailer, so it probably was immaculate. Yeah, I, I, I cleaned it every week. And so I bought it for 26,000 back in 2013. I sold it for 21. I mean, I love the oh. resale market. Toyotas in Hawaii. Oh yeah, I don't in think Hawaii I could do that for else. sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's pretty awesome. But that '98 Chevy right, Cavalier. Man, so we been... Love that. Oh, I remember that. I do remember <laughs> that car. That was, yeah. Back then, I had a Tacoma, but it wasn't a four. A four. It was four a. Tacoma. It was a. Extended suicide cap, like doors. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then. If if me, you, and Chris were going to the club, I would sit in the van, in the like the, the little the extended, yeah. Yeah, 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 or sometimes <laughs> in the, the bed. I just remember yeah. that truck having the it had an AGN sticker, a white one, and I, I want to say yeah. that I don't care one too. Yeah. Yep, it did. Yep, <laughs> that was yeah, that was that was a while ago. I actually flipped that truck over on the H three. <laughs> That's when you're. Talking with one of the other guests, right? You're talking about that. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. That was the one. That was the, that was the truck. <laughs> All right, man. Well, we've been going on for a, a, almost an hour, over an hour. But um, let's wrap it up. Like, if we were to find you on Instagram, where could we find you? Uh, so the business is at Detail Garage Hawaii. Um, my personal one is at IREP Fitness. If you want to see dumb videos oh, nice. or me doing reviews on workout equipment. And then yeah. your website will be detailgaragehawaii.com. Yep. 
So that website links you directly to our online store. Maybe we should oh, set so up. Oh, so you have a, an online store. Maybe we should set up an exclusive code for you too. Oh, for that. sure. I'll put it out there for sure. Yep, we'll get we'll get that figured out. Yeah. So you you guys do um do you do a lot of your online customers come from outside of the island? Um. So we only ship to the outer islands if we need to ship. Oh. Or if you're lazy and don't want to drive to Pro City, we can ship it to you too. If oh yeah, you don't want to drive through on H Street. I get supplements from new um hardcore <clears throat> 808. <laughs> he he mails them to me. <laughs> <laughs> right, and that 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 literally is. They're like my neighbors. Yeah. <laughs> Business neighbors. But yeah, so, I mean, if you want, you can even do uh, curbside pickup or in-store pickup. So you place the order online, pay for it, and then we email you and let you know when it's ready for pickup and you come. And if you don't want to come to the store, you just call us and we'll walk it out to you. And how, for your classes, how do you sign up for those things? Uh, those would be in person because we, we limit it. Even before COVID, we limited it to six people so that it doesn't, you don't lose that personal feel. And if you don't, you know, if you get too big of a crowd, then people are scared to ask questions. So they sign up at the store? Yeah. Oh, okay. All right, man. And for us, you can find us on Instagram at Above the Bridge Pod. Our website is atbpod.com. And our um, YouTube would be Above the Bridge Podcast. So you can find us on all those three platforms. Right on, man. Well, thank you for being a part of our show. Like, this was a fun episode, dude. <laughs> no, thank you. It's, I mean, all the guests you had before me are like superstars compared to this little Filipino guy from Kaneohe. But, hey. Yeah, but you got up on the <laughs> stage with a G-string, so I don't know if anybody <laughs> did that. <laughs> Maybe one of my guests did that. <laughs> <laughs> None of them wore a pink bra on Tiny TV. That is true. No one has done that. <laughs> Don't <laughs> do that. My claim to fame. Yeah, <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> right on, man. Well, I definitely appreciate you um, for coming on. I'm glad that um, you're doing very successful. And, and as a friend, I've always watched, your, um, watched you come up after you were working with us and to see how successful you are and, and to see you with your son and your wife and be able to to go to your house it, it kind of made me feel very proud and and i was very happy to see how successful you are and you're still the same person you're i still can talk to you and and it's still the same and i appreciate that and, and i'm very happy with your success and yeah i'm pretty proud of you man you're you, you're doing super good <laughs> i appreciate it and i would say i definitely wouldn't be who i am today without a lot of the lessons that you taught me so <laughs> I definitely appreciate you right more on, than you man. know. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Well, hopefully we don't get shut down again. I don't have to work out at your house, but if we do, your phone will definitely be ringing. I'll bring boy You're band. The only John other with, member. Remember that. Yep, so. I'll bring boy band John with, with me and we'll get our, <laughs> our workout on. Let's do it. Yep, there you John go. I got that fitness. <laughs> <laughs> right on, man. Well, that's about it. That's episode 10. And as always, shout out to the Artist Groove Network. Right on. Aloha, brother. Aloha. <laughs>